Welcome to today's episode, where we dive into a critical yet often overlooked issue in emergency medicine. Why popliteal injuries can be easily missed in knee dislocations. The knee joint is complex, and when a dislocation occurs, the focus is often on the obvious, bone and ligament damage. However, the popliteal artery nestled behind the knee is at significant risk of injury, and missing it can lead to devastating consequences. We'll explore why this vital structure can be overlooked, the potential complications, and the importance of early diagnosis. Stay tuned as we break down the key factors every clinician should know. All right, so let's jump right into this. Mm -hmm. Imagine you're in the ER and a patient comes in with a knee dislocation. Yes. It's swollen, it's painful. You know, the whole deal. You're thinking about getting the joint back in place. You're managing the pain. Yeah. But there's this, like, hidden danger lurking mm -hmm. that you could easily miss. Oh, yeah. A popliteal artery injury. It really is. It's a tough one, you know. The signs, they can be subtle, but the consequences, if you miss it, uh -oh. severe. I mean, we're talking potential limb loss. That's heavy. Yeah. And that's exactly why we're doing this deep dive today. Absolutely. We've got this case report from South Korea. Okay. And they had a delayed diagnosis, which is a little concerning. Right. We've got some medical journal articles that really lay out the anatomy and the challenges. Yeah. And we've even got a legal case. Oh, wow. Shows just how risky it can be if this injury slips through the cracks. Definitely. So we're basically going to like uncover why this injury is so often missed. Yeah. And give you some you know, actionable stuff. Okay, love that. So you can avoid those pitfalls. Perfect. So let's start with just like the basic anatomy. Why is this injury so hard to see in the first place? So the popliteal artery, it's like this hidden pipeline. Okay. Runs deep behind the knee joint, tucked away behind muscles and fat. Oh, so not easy to get to. No, not at all. You can't just, you know, feel around for it. Right. So uh, unlike some arteries where you can easily feel a pulse, mm -hmm. this one's kind of playing hide and seek. Exactly. Palpation alone, it's not enough. Okay. It's like, imagine you're trying to check the foundation of a house, but you're standing on the roof. That's a good analogy. You need more than just your hands, you know, to really get a good look. Right. And to make things even trickier, the body has these backup systems, Duh. this collateral circulation, which I guess it can be a good thing. It can. But it can also kind of backfire. Oh, yeah. How so? So these smaller arteries, right, they can keep blood flowing to the foot even if the popliteal artery is partially messed up. It's like, you know, you've got those detour routes uh -huh. and there's construction on the main highway. So you might think everything's fine. <laughs> right. Because you can feel a pulse. Yeah. But underneath, there could be this, like, massive traffic jam. Exactly. I like that. That's a really good way to put it. That's exactly what makes this injury so... Well, so sneaky. Right. And that Korean case study, it really highlights this whole issue. It does. They found that popliteal artery injury with knee dislocations, it could be anywhere from 1.6% wow. to a whopping 64%. 64? That's crazy. That's a huge range, right? Yeah. So it's tough to know what to expect. It is. Just shows you can't just go by statistics, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you got to be suspicious in every single case. Okay. So... We've established that this injury can totally fly under the radar. Yeah. What are like the red flags? The red flags, yeah. yeah. The signs that should make us stop and think, hmm, maybe we need to investigate this further. All right. So this is crucial. A palpable distal pulse. Okay. Doesn't necessarily mean the popliteal artery is okay. Hmm. It's a really common misunderstanding. And it can lead to those missed diagnoses. Definitely a trap we need to avoid. Absolutely. We've got this legal case, right? And in this case, you've got this adult male. He dislocated his knee. Okay. And they initially cleared him because he had a pulse. Oh, no. But turns out he had a major popliteal artery injury. Wow. That's a hefty price to pay for assuming everything's okay. It is. So what should we be looking for other than just checking for a pulse? Okay, so think about changes in skin color. Okay. Delayed capillary refill, mm -hmm. diminished pulses. Right. These are all warning signs, and we can't miss them. It's yeah. about seeing the whole picture. Right. Not just focusing on one little thing. It sounds like we really need to be on high alert. We do. Even when things seem, I don't know, relatively stable on the surface. Exactly. And that's where understanding the difference between, you know, those hard signs and soft signs is so important. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about those. So the hard signs, they're obvious, like an absent pulse or if there's active bleeding. But soft signs, 
They're more like nuanced. More subtle. Yeah, exactly. So those soft signs, they can be tricky. Yeah, they can. So like, give me an example of a soft sign that would make you think, hold on, something's not right here. Okay, so say you're comparing the injured leg to the good one. Right. A soft sign could be something as simple as, you know, the injured foot feels cooler. Okay. Or maybe the pulse, it feels a bit weaker compared to the other side. Interesting. So even if we don't see those super obvious red flags, those kind of subtle hints, mm -hmm. those shouldn't be ignored. No way. They can be our only clues, especially in those early stages. And if we miss them, well. Bad news. Yeah. It's amazing and kind of scary how easily this whole thing can be missed. It is, yeah. So we got to have some other tools in our toolbox to help us out. Absolutely. Right? So what else can we do to catch this injury before it's too late? I mean, what are some of the diagnostic tools that can help us confirm what we're seeing? Well, one of the best tools we have is Doppler ultrasound. Doppler, yeah. It's like, you know, we can actually hear the blood flowing through the artery. Yeah, that is pretty cool. It is. And with Doppler, we can hear if there's like any turbulence or blockages. Ah, okay. Which would point towards damage. Makes sense. Yeah. But sometimes Doppler's not enough. Right. Right. Sometimes we need a clearer picture, especially if those Doppler findings are iffy or, you know, if we're really suspicious based on the exam. So what's next? If Doppler's not giving us the answers we need. And geography. That's like the gold standard. Gold standard. Okay. For diagnosing popliteal artery injuries. So how does that work? So it's an x-ray technique. And basically we inject a special dye right. into the blood vessels, and that lets us see the artery. So we can see exactly where the damage is and how bad it is. Gotcha. But even with all these tools, I imagine there are still some tricky cases out there. Oh, for sure. Especially with those soft signs where things aren't always crystal clear. Exactly. And that's why we need to keep checking. Keep checking. Okay. You can't just look once and think, oh, we're good. So serial examinations are key. Crucial. Yeah. Yeah. Got to reassess that circulation over time, see if anything changes. And I'm guessing this is even more important with those high energy injuries. Oh, yeah. Where you might have multiple ligament tears making things even messier. Totally. It gets complicated. Remember that Korean case study we were talking about? Yeah, yeah. So they did a Doppler ultrasound initially, and it looked normal. Normal, okay. But then later on, the patient developed acute ischemia. Uh-oh. What's ischemia again? Remind me. So basically, the blood flow gets so restricted that the tissues start to die. Not good. Not good at all. And this patient ended up needing emergency surgery. Wow. That's a good reminder that we can't just let our guard down. Nope. Uh, even if things look okay at first glance, we need to be vigilant. Absolutely. We got to keep reassessing. And that also means being on top of our communication. Okay. If we even suspect a popliteal artery injury, we need to get a vascular surgeon involved right away right away immediately because time is of the essence here right? right absolutely from the moment that injury happens the clock is ticking tick -tock. we've got about six to eight hours six to eight hours for what for revascularization and revasc remind me what that is again that's basically when we restore blood flow to the limb right right okay so if we don't act within that six to eight hour window the risk of well permanent damage goes way up Permanent damage. Yeah, ischemia yeah. and possibly even amputation. Amputation, wow. That's a heavy thought. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground here. Maybe it's time to take a step back and recap. Sure. Just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Okay, so just to recap, we've been talking about why it's so easy to miss a popliteal artery injury, especially when you have a knee dislocation on your hands. Right, exactly. All those anatomical challenges we talked about, those sneaky soft signs, and why it's so important to really check carefully right and then keep checking. Yeah, and that six to eight hour window for revascularization, Yeah, that's a pretty stark reminder that we need to act fast. No kidding. It all comes down to like change in how we think about these injuries. You know, every single knee dislocation, we got to be thinking about this. Like it's a real possibility. Yeah, absolutely. We can't just check the pulse and call it a day. We've got to dig deeper. Sure. Use those tools we were talking about. Yeah. Doppler and geography. Exactly. And if there's even a shadow of a doubt. Get the vascular surgeon on board. Yep. Everything. Because missing this, the consequences can be devastating. Absolutely devastating. Life-changing for the patient. So the big takeaway here, every knee dislocation, you got to take a really good look at that popliteal artery. Don't be fooled if everything seems fine at first. Trust your gut. If something seems off, don't ignore it. Yeah. Get those tools involved. Doppler, angiography, 
Mm-hmm. They can give you so much information. Exactly. Remember, we're talking about saving limbs here. Early intervention makes all the difference. So next time you see a knee dislocation, ask yourself, am I doing everything I can to rule out a popliteal artery injury? It could make all the difference for that patient. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, that about wraps up this deep dive. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. And until next time, keep learning, keep asking questions. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.